Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Our theme for this convention is Seizing the Moment. Winning the moment is good, but I'm a bit more aggressive. The violent, they get it by force. <laughs> Glory to God. But of course, it's the same thing, not to worry. So there are a few things I'll be touching. I'll take time to define what a spiritual moment is. And then I'll take out time to show you the packages that are allocated to moments of the spirit. And then I'll show you also the protocol for winning, seizing, or hijacking a spiritual moment. Because one thing you will discover is that spiritual things are not given, they are taken. If you wait, it will pass by. And so the basis of my teaching tonight is to show you how to lay hold on what is yours. Because there are many who waited and it never happened. There was a man who waited for 38 years and he never accessed it. The word is to catalambano, take it by force. If you don't know how to take moments, many moments will pass you by. But it's my prayer that in this meeting, every moment allocated for your destiny, you will seize it by force. In the name of Jesus. And so when you are dealing with spiritual moments, you are talking about spiritual timings. And the subject of time is majorly divided into two there's what we call the chronological time or the sequential time and so in theology we call it chronos time and there's also what we call the kairos time or what you call the moment of the spirit they are different things chronological time or sequential time is simply the array of activities that God allows us to run through as a routine either daily weekly monthly or yearly it is an ordinary sequential occurrence of events according to arrangement by God and that timing is available to everyone the purpose of chronological time is to bring order to your life so there is a time to sleep there is a time to wake up. There is a time to do the things you need to do. So it helps you establish order in your life. You can, by reason of wisdom, equip yourself in such a way that you maximize that time. But you see, matters of destiny are not allocated to chronological timing. That's why a man or a woman can be 40 years old and make no impact among men. And somebody else can just be 20 and it's already making global impact. So chronology is good because it brings order into your life, but matters of destiny operate at a time zone superior to chronology. And that is why you talk about moments. And moments are time, also called Kairos time. A Kairos time is actually an opportune time. Seekers, because the way God walks is, you know, God is light. From the Bible God said in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 16, it said God is light and that light is unapproachable. Holy men of God and there are some of you here who are probably professors are of science. Of human intellect, you have done science at one level or the other. You know that although you are seeing light as a stream, but light is actually given out in packets. So the light ray you see is actually packets. We call it quanta. In singular form, it's called quantum. It's packets. Light moves in packets. And because God is light, that is how God distributes his resources to his children. They come in packets. If God releases the full dose of what he has for you, it will destroy you. You can't receive it. 
So what God does is that he distributes the resources that he has for you in packets. And these packets get to you in different seasons. So the seasons that capture the blessings of God for you are the things that we call moments. So there are people who have moments show up in their lives in cycles of weeks, in cycles of months, in cycles of years, and it continues like that. Because the blessedness and the blessings of God, you can't trap all of it at the same time. God is, you can't quantify God. His essence, he's too massive. If I had time to teach you about God, you will see that there are three major things about God. There's the essential attribute of God. There is the moral attribute of God. And there is also the office, the offices that God occupies. For example, God is omnipotent. Now, imagine if the one who is all-powerful tries to approach your realm. The power will crush you even before he gets to you. Just like if you want to pick an ant, you have to be very careful to touch it because if you are not careful, you will squeeze it. Now, that is your size compared to an ant. Imagine if an elephant wants to pick an ant. It will literally be impossible because of the difference in size. Now, when God wants to reach your realm, he has to be very de delicate to transfer his resources to your realm because of the magnitude in difference. So what God does is that he distributes what he wants to give you into packets, into units. And those units come to you at specific timing. And so those opportune times when divine things happen in your space is what we call Kairos moment. And so Kairos moments are not for routine. Kairos moments are opportunities that define your destiny. And so when you see two believers, the difference between them is not their age. When you meet two believers, the difference between them is the degree to which they maximize Kairos moments. That's why you have to master how to win moments of the spirit because they come with messages of empowerment for shaping your destiny. So nobody is useless and nobody is handicapped. A man who appears handicapped is handicapped because he has not mastered how to maximize moments. Because in God's faithfulness, he programs our life such that everybody has a witness that God is faithful. But the problem is that not many discern it and not many maximize it. So the purpose of this conference is to teach you how to access moments of the spirit and also to help you maximize the things that you have lost. Because one thing God will do here tonight is that some of the things that you have lost, there is a system of restoration that will be activated to bring it back to your life. That, that's what mercy will do for us in this, in this meeting. A restorative system program will be designed to bring you back into what you lost 10 years ago. Because when you, are when you are dealing with Kairos moment, since it's not a routine, it is not linear. Kronos time is linear. You can't recover it. If you move, you have left it. But Kairos moments are opportune moments. God has a system of restoration where he can bring it back. That's why I said the years that the canker worm has eaten. He's not talking about linear years. He's talking about opportunities that are trapped. Because there are some of you here that your opportunity to become a leader at a national level came in 2019, but you didn't seize it. And because you didn't seize it, you have labored for five years, you have not become a leader. So what God will do is that he will open that window again in 2024. <laughs> that, that's the beauty of Kairos moment. But we will get there. Hallelujah. So that's the difference between Kairos moment and Kronos moment. Kronos timing is a linear time. It defines your routine. It defines your activities. But your destiny is not tied into those activities necessarily. It is the moments of the spirit called Kairos times that carries the weight of your destiny. Imagine if Mary missed Gabriel. Her virginity would have been good, but it wouldn't have had, it had impact on salvation. Because that time that the angel came was a Kairos moment. It was designed from eternity past that that is when she will carry the power to bear a child. But you see, it was tied into an opportunity. And that was what made all the difference. This is the power and the excellency of moments. And this is why every believer must master how to win moments. Now, before I go into 
the protocol for winning moments that God allocates to a man, let me show you a few things that are calibrated into moments in order to give you an idea of the importance of moments and why you must contend for it. Number one, miracles and supernatural occurrences are tied into moments. John chapter 2, the Bible tells us a story that happened at a wedding in Canaan. If you read from verse 1 to verse 11, you will see the story. Jesus attended that wedding and suddenly the Bible told us that the wine was finished and the mother of Jesus came to him knowing that this is a miraculous being. This is a, a child of wonder. He has the capacity to create supernatural possibilities and he told the child that their wine is finished. Jesus didn't complain about power. There was one thing Jesus raised. He said, woman, what do I have to do with you? My time is not yet come. Because Jesus was trying to educate us that miraculous happenings are tied to moments. If you know how to access moments, you can delve into miracles. And if you master it, every day of your life can become an endless flow of the miraculous. Because in every day, there are moments that are articulated into those days to bring you a blessing. My time is not yet come. The problem many people have is that they've not known their timing. And if you miss your time, there are consequences. In Luke 19 verse 44, Jesus looked at the city and he lamented over that city. Not because there is no government. Not because there are no good people. He said, this city, there will be gnashing of teeth. That means men will cry and wail. Why? He said, because you do not know the time of your visitation. So one of the most dangerous things that happens to a man is for him not to discern the time of his visitation. He will struggle like an elephant, but he will eat like an ant. Because after laboring, when the blessing comes, he will not be able to pick it. Jesus said, my time is not yet come. That means miracles are tied to moments. If you understand how to work miracles, all you do is that you are waiting for the moment. We who are preachers here, sometimes we come into a meeting and as we are teaching, we are waiting. As we are teaching, we are waiting. Sometimes in a second, there's a movement. The moment you pick that thing, you become a giant because you will ride on that wind back to life. Not because you came in as a special person, but because you have the power to read the moments of the spirit. That is what Jesus here. Anybody who wants to walk in the realm of miracles must master how to win times, how to recover times, and how to possess times. In John chapter five, from verse two, the Bible told another story. He said there was by the sheep market, a pool called the pool of Bethesda. And he said there, important folks, Broken men, sick and battered men, lay down and down and troubled the war problem he has. So your problem is not what you are looking at. Cancer is not the problem. Poverty is not the problem. The problem is you don't know when the water is dead. Made whole. Now, team and walked away out. And that's why what I will teach you later is mercy, the protocol of mercy. Because most of you, in addition to time, you need mercy. And to show you how undiscerning this man was, Jesus did, yes, Lord. The man went to story. I've been here for 38 years. He said, when the water is dead, nobody. So even that moment, he was about to miss it. That's why those who murmur never maximize time. If you want to win time, you must learn to take murmuring from you. You must learn to forget all these talkers, mali, malice, gossip, backbiting. There are some of the things that have kept most of us where we are. Will thou be made whole? Yes, Lord. He said, there's nobody to help me when the water is there. He was angry that nobody was helping him. If people have not finished helping themselves, will they help you? And he was there for 38 years because he didn't know. But everybody who entered received a miracle. So the first thing that times, moments make available is possibility for signs and wonders miracles everybody here can receive miracles but the thing is that do you know your timing if you know your timing the money can come if you know your timing the healing can come if you know your timing the connection can come but many don't know their timing the first thing that moments makes available are miracles no. Two. second thing that moments make available is fulfillment of
There are many prophecies hanging on your life. I'm a pastor. I've seen many people come to me before. They said every meeting they go to, a prophet must call them out and prophesy. But they've not seen it. The reason they've not seen it is because they don't know the intelligence of time. Prophecies are, are fulfilled according to the time schedule that the Lord has apportioned to them. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 to verse 5. The Bible said, when the fullness of time was come, it said, God sent his son. So Jesus was prophesied, but he will not manifest until the time window that was allocated from eternity. The same applies to you. There has been a prophecy on your life that you'll be governor. There has been a prophecy on your life that you will feed many poor people. There has been a prophecy on your life that you will travel the nation. If you miss the timing, that prophecy will be dormant. Because it's moments that animate prophecies. Even God had to respect the protocol of prophecy. When he met Abraham's wife in Genesis 18, he said in the fullness of time, he said, I will return and your wife, Sarah, will be with child. He didn't just show up and said, I am God, give birth. It doesn't work like that. Prophecy follows a protocol of time. This is why everybody must understand how time works. It's good to receive prophecy, but there is a labor you must put in to know the season for the maximizing of that prophecy. That's why some of you are here. There are certain seasons that it looks like your prophecy is about to come and you need strength to ascend. And so the Holy Ghost came ahead of time and told you fast, fast, fast. But you will not fast until that window will pass. And then you are wondering, I've received this prophecy for 14 years is is it that the prophet is fake or why is it not coming to pass the prophet is not fake the prophet is not wrong you don't know how to enter your window I'm showing you no Christian should be weak our weakness and our defeat is a function of our ignorance many of us here are carrying more than 50 prophecies on our head even the people we are celebrating have less prophecy than us the problem is that we have not fulfilled one because we don't know how to seize the opportunity. We don't know how to win the moments of the spirit. And that's why those prophecies have not been maximized. Prophecies are articulated into moments. Number three, why are moments so important? Deliverances are tied to moments. Devils know this, but Christians don't. Joseph was in prison for over 14 years languishing there in fact two years before the time that god allocated he built a connection with the butler printed his dream and you go back please talk to the king about me but if your time has not come they will remember you that's why connection in the flesh is useless if the holy ghost is not involved there are many people who compromise to build carnal relationships there are many people who do terrible things at the end of the day they are deceived they are forgotten and they are neglected because they don't respect the protocol in the spirit i've dealt with many youth there are many sisters who sleep with lecturers in the university to pass destiny is not just about passing exam it's good to pass exam but ma when you go into the street you will need favor you will need wisdom you will need divine timing all of that a lecturer can't give it so it's a waste to give up yourself in order to get a score study hard any score you get receive it with integrity and go away your life is bigger than paper Psalm 105 verse 17, he sent a man before them, even Joseph. The Bible said he was sent. What a way to send a man. He was a, he was a houseboy, he was accused, he was put in prison. Is that how God sends men? Yes. What you call a, a life of pain and sorrow was a divine errand. But the guy knew. He knew that although things are not working now, but all things will eventually work for my good. For all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And so while he was in prison, he was waiting for his time. So when Potiphar's wife came, sleep with me, he said, no. Although my destiny is not to be a houseboy, he looks as if God has forgiven, forgotten me, but I will not do this evil. A time is coming when my status will change. If I compromise now, I have betrayed my destiny. So it was because of that time that he endured. 
you not read about Jesus? The Bible said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the pain. People who don't know how spiritual things are administered, they are the ones who compromise. I will not sleep with you. If he did, he would have become the head of house boys. And he would have been there for a lifetime. A prime minister would have been the head of house boys. But he refused. And the Bible said, Psalm 105 verse 18, until the time that his word came, he said the word of the Lord tried him. They end for to lose him. Even the ruler of the people, he made him lord of his house and ruler of his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his senators wisdom. Imagine, Potiphar was not even a senator. The guy was going to a level in life where senators would become his students and disciples. What if he compromised? He knew that there was a time. He knew that there was a season where everything that part his deliverance will happen. Hear me, women of God. It doesn't matter if you are in a straight head. Keep your ground. Your time is in the spirit. When that moment, the Bible said, he lifted up the beggar from the tongue he, and it causes him to stand among princes that they may inherit throne. You will not end where you are. You are on a journey. Wait for your time. Your enemies may laugh at you. They may taunt you. They may make mockery of you. I thought you said you are beautiful. How come you don't have a child? Wait. Your womb is being prepared. Think about Elizabeth. She was not giving birth until she was old. But that womb needed to be incubated with prayer. Because the one that was coming was a voice crying in the wilderness. It's not a child. So it's not about the number of children. It's about the weight of destiny that they carried. And when the guy showed up, they said, who are you? He said, I'm the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Pray the Lord. He took an intercessor to raise that child. So it was not marital delay. It was not delay in giving birth. It was incubation process for a prophet. A prophet that could bring forth the Messiah. Do you know the testimony of Jesus concerning John? He said, of all men that lived, he said there was none greater than John. That was the child Elizabeth carried. What if she didn't wait for her time? There is nothing you are going through that you cannot be delivered from. But it takes a timing. There is a time allocation in the spirit. And I don't know about you, but me, I will wait for my time. I'm not looking for anybody outside God to help me. I'm not looking for any mechanical means to go ahead. The race is not to the swift. Neither is the battle to the strong. It's of the Lord that showeth mercy. I'm not moved by what men say. When I look to the east, I know that my Redeemer liveth. He may not appear as if it is working, but I know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Don't bother about those mocking you. That's not where your destiny is going to. Did you read about Hannah? The Bible said Penina made a mess of her. Every time they went to Shiloh, Shiloh was supposed to be the high place of worship. But it was in the place of worship that she was mocked. So that she couldn't access her God. That this thing is a distraction. And she went before God. She left every distraction aside. And she was laboring in prayer. And God remembered Hannah. God remembered Hannah. When your time come, God will remember you. I prophesy over someone. This is your season of remembrance. Oh. Yeah. you see the spirit realm is a pregnant realm it carries many things destinies are carried there miracles are carried there no matter what is happening on ground focus if you know how to win the moments in the spirit you will conquer on ground a prisoner can become a prime minister a barren woman can become the mother of the greatest man that ever lived that is the supernatural interplay and possibility of the spirit realm you are not defeated. You are not useless. There is a time for everything under the sun. There is a time. Find that time. Maximize that time. And see the color that your destiny will issue out. 
Now, what wicked men partnering with demons? Temptation said to frustrate a man on his course. He said, The Lord approved not. Because there are too many wicked men who will only be happy if you go down. There are too many wicked people who will go out of their way. Their destiny will be to see you frustrated. These are evil. The dark places of the earth, the Bible said, is filled with the habitation and salvation. Let us delve into the depths of these sacred texts. Where this was Jesus verse, talking. Every verse is a he said, Therefore, be ye also ready. Our Creator. For as in such an hour as ye think not, the, the Son of Man cometh. This is how spiritual time happens. This is how moments happen. Moments happen when you don't expect. And so Jesus is teaching us here that the way to position yourself in order to win every moment is to live ready. If you are not prepared, you can't win time. Only those who live ready win every time that comes to them. Ask those who are making impact, they'll tell you. Some people is why they are having their bath that something opens in the spirit, not in the church service, but the antenna is always sharp and they pick that thing wrong with it and dominate nation. And you think it's by going to take a course for seven years in Harvard. That is beautiful, but opportune times are worn differently. Your spirit must be prepared. See, this is what you don't fast when you have problem. The That's for the weak. The of the when you fast man, only the, in the time of problem, it means your life is a reaction, not an action. We don't fast to solve problems. We fast to stop problems. For those of us who live fasting, problems don't come. We live praying. We live studying because we are preparing our spirit. We don't know the hour. But people who don't prepare, it's only when things happen, they start running to catch up. That's why they're always behind. Those who are prepared, they are ahead. Because while it is yet happening, they're already maximizing it. This is the first key for winning time. First Peter 1.13. It is replete in scripture. Study it, you will see it. They don't prepare. He said, give up your loins. He said, be sober. Hope the end for the grace that should be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus. Give up your loins. Hope to the end. Be ready. Be steadfast. At any hour, you are ready. Did you read the story of the foolish virgins? Matthew 25, verse 1 to 18. They took things for granted. They didn't come ready with oil. And what happened? The bridegroom didn't show up until at midnight. When did they discover they had no oil? Few minutes to midnight. And they thought preparation is cheap. They went to their colleagues, give me oil. They said, no, this oil they don't give. They... There are oils that are not given, they are bought. And that buying is the pain of preparation. You will spend hours in prayer to prepare your spirit. You will spend days, weeks, months of fasting to prepare your spirit. He you said, if you faint in the day of trouble because your strength is little, they don't buy, they don't, they don't gift that oil, they buy it. And they said, go to them that have and buy. We can't give you. The moment they stepped out, the bridegroom came. That's how moments happen. This is why many never fulfill destiny. Because the oil will always finish few minutes to the moment of the spirit. Few minutes, that's when it finishes. And they, when they left, the bridegroom came and the door is locked. See, let me tell you, there are certain opportunities that is designed to happen to you once. There are some designed to happen to you five times. There are some designed to happen to you ten times. I'm not the one who designed it. That's why you you can't. When they came, they knocked, opened the door. They said, no, these doors, they don't open it. When it's locked, it's locked. And what? Keep crying, prepare. You take it for granted. The Holy Ghost himself comes every day troubling you. There are certain seasons of your life because of the urgency of preparation, you wake up with a fear that you are not ready. But some people still kill and abort. Those become slaves from preparing for destiny has already buried you for destiny. I was people are carrying their grave in their hands. From morning to night, they are watching movies, uploading pictures, liking. Meanwhile, these are Deborahs. A Deborah is a kingdom. 
go and meet some ladies in society. Church, they say, Lord, we have mercy. Oh, God, we help us. And people are wasting away, not preparing for the great destiny. Not a gift. It is worked. Every one of us is entitled to it by the mercy of God, but we must walk our way into it. This is why preparing because they did not know the times of their visitation. By taking action. Some people prepare. But it will never manifest again. Take action. See, those who win opportunities and rule this world are people who are given to proactivity. Never find yourself dormant. And this is a major problem. And especially in Africa. Some of us is from our upbringing. In the bid to discipline children, we kill their confidence. And it follows them for a lifetime. Your boy is two years old. You have knocked him more than 300 times. For even things that are not serious. You have called him a baboon. You have called him a donkey. Every devilish name you have called him. Now he has lost his confidence. And when he comes to a place where he needs to stand up, there is something holding him back. There is a fear that you have introduced into him. So it's not just affecting those who are here. Some of us, we have translated that liability to our children because of the way we raise them. I'm not saying discipline is wrong. He said, if you don't take the rod, the child will be spoiled. Why? Because foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. He says, the rod of correction that drives it out. I'm an advocate of discipline. But when a child has to be disciplined, he must be told why he's been disciplined. There must be a justification so that you will know that this action is not because you have a weakness of anger. This action is because you love him and you are straightening his path. People who don't take action never maximize moments. Proverbs 20, 24 verse 33. A little sleep. In today's sermon, we a little slumber. Topic of the ministry a little of the folding of the hand. hand. He said, poverty shall God, come like an armed man. As the divine spark that awakens John chapter 9 verse 4. Jesus said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. So what he's telling us is that the day is an opportunity. If I don't take action during the opportunity, I may never have the opportunity to take the action again. I must walk. This is Jesus speaking. That is God in human form talking. That he too takes action in order to maximize moments. How can you ever hope to maximize moments when you don't take action? I must walk the walk of him that sent me while it is day. A, the night comet where no man walk. The second way to maximize moments is to become proactive. The third way to maximize moments is to build discernment. The ability to recognize moments in the first place. If you don't have discernment, you can't know the action to take. First Chronicles 12, 22, and the sons of Isaac. It said, these are men that understood, I think that's 32, times and seasons, and knew what Israel ought to do. And of the children of Isaac, it said, which were men that had understanding of times and seasons and knew what Israel ought to do. He said the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their commandment. They knew what to do because they discern time. People who don't know the moments that they are in will not know the actions to take. Look at the life of Jesus. John 13 verse 1. Jesus knew that his time on earth was over. So he started wrapping up. He said, now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart from this world unto his father, he knew my stay here is over. You know why some people live carelessly? They don't know the time that they are in. So they assume that it's business as usual. It's not business as usual. The reason you think it's business as usual is because you can't distinguish between times. There are times when if you sleep, it's a sin. As far as your destiny is concerned. There are times when if you don't seek help, it's a sin. As far as your destiny is concerned. There are times when if you don't go out to walk, it's a sin. When you find somebody who lies down all through the day, all through the week, there's a lack of discernment. 
the moment discernment is born the urgency to walk is activated so those who are walking are walking because discernment regulates the passion to serve i'm telling you why many are not making impact and it looks as if god is biased god is not biased the bible said it's not a respecter of man he doesn't favor one above the other all of us are eating based on the degree that we align with spiritual protocols that is jesus the son of god same thing in john 12 23 he said the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified he knew when he was to be glorified he knew when he was supposed to leave this world as you are seated now what have you discerned what season are you in now that's why you can afford to copy what somebody else is copying meanwhile the danger is that the person is not in the same season as you so he is doing something that is dictated by his season you are doing something that is completely at variance with the season you are in you will be in trouble discernment is key discernment is key there is an ability to discern time i already told you from john chapter 5 a man was was helpless for 38 years just because he couldn't discern when the water is stirred as simple as that thing is he was crippled for 38 years is it possible that the last 40 years of your life has been a struggle just because you have not discerned is it possible that the last 20 years of your life has been a frustration just because you have not discerned? Is it possible? Some people, something as sensitive as marriage, they cannot marry by discernment. They are looking at mundane things. Where the person walks, the car he drove, is your life that cheap? What if he's driving a Lamborghini and he has two years to live on it? Will you marry the car? See, see we, we, this is the problem that many have. And these are major things. Listen, if you want to win every opportune moment that God has allocated for your destiny, you must seek, understand how to build discernment. And one of the ways to build discernment is to meditate on the word of God. Sit down, talk the word to yourself. The word will reconfigure how you think. So you begin to think in accordance to the mind of God. Meditate on the word of God. That's the simplest way to build discernment. But there are many who walk just based on luck, chance, and the suggestions of people. The fourth way to maximize moments is by sustaining the right heart posture. If your heart posture is wrong, even if you enter, God will push you out. Some people have discernment. They take the right action. They are prepared, but their heart is wrong. So they enter the moment. It is God that rejects them because of their evil heart. So if you want to win moments, your heart must be wrong. Because one of the things God edits in order to allow a man maximize moments is whether his heart is qualified to be numbered into that moment look at first samuel chapter 16. samuel showed up and he saw Eliab. if you read from verse 5 to verse 7 the guy had stature he looked royal and samuel said surely this is the lord's anointed he took oil to anoint him and god said no i have refused him i've not rejected him there's a difference between rejection and refusal that means he can be but his heart is not ready and god said why he said men look at the outward i the lord i look at the heart so if your heart is wrong you cannot win moments if your heart is wrong you cannot maximize spiritual moments the heart is the basis jeremiah 17 verse 10 he said i the lord i search the heart I test the reins to give unto every man as his way should be. Why did you think Hannah could not give birth for a long time? It's not because she was barren. Her heart was wrong. 
She wanted to give birth to show Penina that she took her. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.